Tonight, how do you sell televisions? The biggest purchase most of us will make after our house and car, and for Russell, yacht. <laughs> 2.7 million TV screens sold in Australia last year in 2010. 3D has been the big industry push. The status bait to get early adopters to trade up from the flat screens they only just bought. What if you didn't just watch TV? You lived it. Introducing the LG Infinia 3D Full LED Backlit LCD TV. Not all 3D TVs are made equal. LG Infinia. Live borderless. Got a message for you. I already do live 3D. <laughs> it's called Everyday Life. <laughs> Russell, LG's a global client of your company. Yes. Is, is 3D TV a genuine advance or just a genuine advance in marketing? No, it's a, it is a genuine technological advance and it needs marketing. Um, there's, no, there's no question. It needs us. It needs us to be able to communicate to people, you know, perhaps and to generate demand. Yeah, it is. It, it's legit. Of course but, it's legit. But let's be honest, if you go online to anything, Geek Zone, I was looking at geek101.com, pretty much anything with geek, the guys who know about this stuff, and it's getting a hammering. Yeah, but when they not... don't have a lot of positive things to say, I think they're trying to ride on the wave of famous movies like Avatar and, as you say, the World Cup. But I also think they kind of go, I really hope this flies because there are a lot of issues with it. The main yeah. motivator here is not to technology, it's status. Because mm -hmm. the television used to be just entertainment in the home. Now it's a badge. It's a badge of your wealth or the ability to show that you have wealth. Branding and it's rights. the thing they talk about, the, the, the democratization of luxury. The TV's the poster child of that. TVs but, just get bigger and bigger. I remember the yeah. days when mobile phones and televisions were exactly the same size. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think it's pretty basic with 3D. It's, it's a, it's a, a content uh, driven, it's going to be a content driven strategy. I reckon porn, sport and gaming will make 3D take off. Porn? Mm. <laughs> porn I'll take right? your eye out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the stuff that's in porn coming at me in 3D. <laughs> the sad part is you do. <laughs> I do not. You'll be up in the attic doing 3D. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your eye? Ron Jeremy. <laughs> um, but the thing is, the porn industry is really excited about the technology, but they haven't actually gotten to the point where they can afford to create content yeah. based in 3D yet. But gaming, certainly, with PlayStation, they're developing 3D games and they're making sure that their 2D games actually work in a 3D environment. I don't, well. I, I don't yeah. think it's good for porn. Pants off, glasses on. Oh, no. yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, I don't but like also, it. in terms of gaming, that's that, also the pokies. The pokies are now moving into 3D as well. At the recent Cannes ever advertising festival, um, Ben Stiller was one of the keynote speakers and he was actually asked what do you think of 3D TVs and he said quote 3D TVs are crap, they're a fad, and they will not last. I wouldn't be going to Ben Stiller for advice on the future <laughs> technology. Yeah. Just because he's, yeah. he's on TV doesn't make him expert. Yeah. Yeah. He also, <laughs> he, uh, hey, what, what, what does Plucker Duck think about 3D technology? <laughs> yeah. Have we checked with him yet? <laughs> <laughs> what this ties into as well, though, is it really is quite premature the way that they have launched it. Mm. Simply because at the moment they're developing 3D TVs that work without the glasses. They're also looking at 3D TVs don't always play in 3D. They've got the 2D side of it as well, and that's really low resolution. And when you're talking about the drivers who are actually going to be the initial buyers of this, they're people who understand technology and can tell you about the makeup of the television and exactly how it works and what it does and this and that and whatever else. In recent years, Sony have made great telly ads, most notably its Bravia spots. This one from 2005 featured a quarter of a million Super Bowls bouncing down a San Francisco street. The 2006 follow-up splattered thousands of letters of paint onto a Glasgow council estate. And the 2007 model went for animated plasticine bunnies. Here's its latest ad for 3D. That ad just gives me a headache. <laughs> Todd, how smart is it to make an ad that causes pain to the viewer? Um, this, uh, this ad was made by Jonathan Glazer, who's a very famous director. He did some of the Sony ads. He also was the director of the movie Sexy Beast. And he's a very, very talented. But this is an example of even talent mm -hmm. can't get around a crap idea. Uh, what, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to show 3D and 2D. And, and the brief is 
the brief to him would have been, do something original that's going to cut through, that's going to get people to um, realize how good 3D technology is. Yeah. I think he failed but, because he focused on the negative. He yeah, focused on the problem, the, what you were referring to, which is 3D fatigue or 3D motion sickness. He, he built it around the negative, which uh, I think But, but of, course, the, of course, they are trying to solve the fundamental difficulty in selling 3D TVs is that you're watching the ad on 2D. But, that, that's what makes it so difficult. So, it, I, I, look, what it's obviously trying to do is say, imagine if these things were together, how cool that would but be. But I'm feeling sick while I'm imagining. But I'm also, thinking... but more than that, I think they've walked away from massive brand equity that they had in colour. I mean, yeah. everyone loved the colour campaigns. <laughs> Why not evolve from colour like no other, possibly to something like, um, I don't know, space like no other or shape like no other so you still hold on to that brand equity that you've evolved well if it helps i've heard ben stiller reckons it's shit <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he, i mean I, I bridge i agree i mean that beautiful sound the, the balls commercial i mean in in the world of advertising there's a few which are if you like i think universally top five ever yeah. i mean for me that is just one of the most stunning commercials the great thing about doing that is that there's equity as we call it for a very long time. Mm. Like, the consumer will let you get away with maybe something not quite as good. But they've done it, it three times, the colour. So I, re I reckon they've given it a good whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evolve yeah. it, yeah. evolve mm. it But now. the thing is, though, with this campaign, and I think that this is clever for this reason, is that it's indicating that if you do not have a 3D TV, you're missing out on content. That's yeah, it. it. And that's, that, to me, if I was a techie person who wanted to be at the forefront of everything, this idea of missing out would motivate me to go and check but if it you out. Heard, but if you heard about 3D fatigue and if you heard people were having issues with oh, motion sickness and recovery, yeah. Yeah. you'd see that out and you just, that would just amplify the and negative. That ad also reminds me of this fine print for a Samsung TV which warns that pregnant women, the elderly, sufferers of serious medical conditions, those who are sleep deprived or under the influence of alcohol <laughs> should not watch 3D TV. <laughs> Bridget, what's the point of making an ad if there's no one left to advertise to? 